This week, I wanted to update you on the walkabout, the importance of it. Yeah, you saw it, go see that walkabout, but today we're coming into full bloom, at least for the cherries and plums. Stay tuned. So, so much has happened since the last walkabout. We're into peak bloom for the cherries and plums. Fantastic crew this year. Have, uh, right now there's four women here. Uh, Jasmine, Carolyn, Eva, and Howie. And they've done an incredible job so much planting has been done. Layered shrubs that were down, uh, gooseberries and currants, a lot of currants. Currently we've been planting currants. So these, look at the Taylor Asian pear named after incredible Ken Taylor doing permaculture for a long time in our area. You can still see the you can see the mark here, that's the graft mark. So it was an overgraft of a lousy pear for our area called Flemish Beauty. Been filling in daylilies. So one of the changes we've done this year, usually we'll have our, if you look at our plastic row, we'll usually have our perennial row in here and we'll have our tree row over here. So we've started this year to add I call it the fourth and fifth row. So in the plastic, great to see. A few years ago, we did big rounds of planting hascap bushes. Hascap is the edible honeysuckle. But we put in about 600 a few years ago. So a lot of, a lot of what you do, <laughs> you think, you know, I'm planting, I'm doing, I'm doing. Be patient, give them time. Some plants are a little slower. They will kick in. But it's nice to see when you almost forget about them because they're just, we plant them as tiny little cuttings sometimes. And it's hard to remember, gosh, you know, what, what's happening? You know, is it even going? Is it working? Well, yeah, it's working. It's coming. Give it some time. It will, it will get going. Just trying to show you a little bit of the blooms as we go around. It's starting. It's exciting. It's starting. Some more overgrafted pears so this one didn't work so we came back and we grafted right down these are bud grafts so we'll see how they take but the spring has been unbelievably good <laughs> most people would say no it's been a terrible spring it's been cool it's been cloudy it's been quite moist although not too much look at look at some of these rhubarb here and it's been great to be able to extend that spring, but the weather's been so cooperative. We've gotten the irrigation system is all up and running for, gee, this is the earliest we've ever done it. It's been a month that we've had the irrigation system up and running. If you've got your pear or your trees blooming right to the peak, that's right to the very top, that is the maximum height your tree will grow. Because once you put 10 pounds of pears on each of those branches. It, it was like that, it will be like that by the fall. Great time to be in the permaculture orchard right now. You can see a little bit the effect of the trios. There's the robin right there. Two grape cuttings were put at the base of this honey locust. So now they're starting to climb. Red currant blooming under a blooming pear tree and the king is always the, the first one so the king blossom is that's what's blooming right now you say well no oh, there's another tree right there there's another pear oh you know what there's another pear right there and there's another pear right there so yeah thinning is a nice idea but i don't it's uncon inconceivable for me to do thinning on hundreds of so let me 
Let me walk about a little more here because I'm not walking much. There's too much to see here. It's it's incredible. They're so it's so exciting. But we we really are seven to ten days behind where it should be. He plants the garlic bulbs and then he shreds leaves. It's a really nice technique. See how clean they are? That's not weeded. This was uh, Caroline and Eva and how we did a, a big round. We put in another little nursery here. I do like using mulch. We just don't always have enough of it. And you do have to come back. Don't think that because this is mulch that it's done for the year. Jerusalem artichoke bed, asparagus bed. I love the smell of asparagus in the morning. Just eating it raw right out of the garden. If you have a garden, eat so much of your stuff raw. There's nothing better than being able to just pick it and eat it. Swallow mating action right there. Some more swallow sex going on there. This one I think is Juliet cherry. I never really know the cultivars well because we didn't do a great job of identifying a whole lot of our trees. All of these bumblebees right now are all queen. They're all queens. They're all mated females from last fall. They emerge and they're all future queens. There's no males around at this time of year. Huh. I don't remember putting this plum tree in here. Not that it doesn't need to be done, but you know what? There are other people who want to learn. And so the interns are really here to learn. And I try to get them up to speed as quickly as possible. We no longer put asparagus in the trios just because they grow too big. They're really way too big. Anything over about a meter in an agricultural area, in an agricultural enterprise, should be normal to have such a diversity and abundance of birds. It's not like what I'm doing should be exceptional. No, it should be the norm. Birds are kind of like the tip of the iceberg. It's just the things you actually notice and see. That means if there's so many birds, there's a lot more other things. We're getting more frogs using the orchard. We're even getting more salamanders. So here we've put in a couple of rows, two rows, and those rows will extend and are extending these two rows which if you see the virtual tour, you'll, you'll understand, but it's basically a big hedgerow that we'll have right in the core. This is the middle of the orchard. It's looking good, it's looking good. I, I like sometimes just a little bit, it's like, it's like uh, if you think, you know, maybe your house, I'm not sure how it looks. Well, just painting makes a big difference. So I find in the orchard, just mowing makes a big difference. So we try not to mow, we don't want to mow everything, but, mowing just to give us access in here especially is nice so we don't do that in this one although here was a strip that was mowed go see that that video on mowing so many videos i tell you look at all the dandelions not <laughs> i want to do a video in the next this week about dandelions and how if you have a lot of dandelions they're a great indicator they're not a problem, they're an indicator. Our dandelions have really solved the problems they're, to go, they're gonna solve. So watch for that video as well. So get out, get up and just be thankful for the day. It really, it really gives you a different perspective. It's hard to be so negative when you're thankful. So something like that, be patient even with birds, not just the plants, but be patient with the birds. You don't always notice it when a plant is little and you propagate it. I think that's why people buy big plants because they want to see the results. Don't get fooled by buying big plants. It's really a false economy because the big plant doesn't do better. The small plant does better because you can pretty well dig it up and move it without breaking or damaging hardly any roots. It's nice to go walk about. If you didn't see the first one, go see the reason why walk about. Today wasn't so much on planning the work, it was just to show you the progress a bit and uh, it's so nice to see how things are progressing. And if you like this and you think somebody might benefit from walking about their property, share it with them. 
So, so much has happened since the last walkabout. We're into peak bloom for the cherries and plums. Apples not yet. Apples are just barely, not even pink bud yet. But the pears, some of the pears are blooming. Actually, here's the Asian pear. And they're blooming. The cherries and plums are blooming but so much has happened in the last five six weeks it's been amazing it's the progress has been spectacular we've got a fantastic crew this year have uh, right now there's four women here uh, Jasmine Carolyn Eva and Howie and they've done an incredible job so much planting has been done. Uh, trees put in a whole lot more plum trees and cherry trees. We did a whole lot, a big round of putting in uh, just checking an old graft that's been done. It doesn't look like it took. No, it didn't take. Um, so, yeah, so many shrubs, a whole lot of layered shrubs that were down, uh, gooseberries and currants, a lot of currants. Currently, we've been planting currants. So these, look at that. This is. Which one is this? I don't even know. But look at look at little little plum a little uh, pears. So pears are starting, starting to not quite size up, but they're pollinated already. So the pears, some of them have are finishing up. Here's a nice Taylor Asian pear named after incredible. Ken Taylor doing permaculture for a long time in our area. And so this is an overgraft. Here was the tree. We cut the tree. And right here, you can still see the, you can see the mark here. That's the graft mark. So it was an overgraft of a lousy pear for our area called Flemish Beauty. Sorry if you're Flemish, uh, no hard feelings, but this pear was terrible unless you really sprayed the heck out of it. So because we don't, it's a terrible pear. Uh, so we got a lot of trees planted. We got a lot of shrubs planted. We got a whole lot of perennials planted, thousands, thousands literally thousands of, m much of them was uh, daylilies. I'm looking at some now. So here was been filling in daylilies. So one of the changes we've done this year, usually we'll have our, if you look at our plastic row, we'll usually have our perennial row in here and we'll have our tree row over here. So we've started this year to add, I call it the fourth and fifth row. So in the plastic, we'll now have, I shouldn't say now, we'll gradually have uh, five rows planted in the uh, plastic. So that'll be a nice change. Great to see a few years ago, we did big rounds of planting hascap bushes. Hascap is the edible honeysuckle. So here it is here. It's nice to see that those little hascap now are are really some of them are even flowering but we put in about 600 a few years ago so a lot of a lot of what you do <laughs> you think you know I'm planting I'm doing I'm doing be patient give them time some plants are a little slower they will kick in but it's nice to see when you almost forget about them because they're just we plant them as tiny little cuttings sometimes and it's hard to remember, gosh, you know, 
what's happening? You know, is it even going? Is it working? Well, yeah, it's working. It's coming. Give it some time. It will, it will get going. Just trying to show you a little bit of the blooms as we go around. It's starting. It's exciting. It's starting. Some more overgrafted pears. So this one didn't work. So we came back and we grafted right down. These are bud grafts, so we'll see how they take. The key for grafting is just about just keep grafting. You think, wow, it's, it's not all gonna work. Don't worry about it. They're not all gonna work. We did a nice grafting video. Uh, we got a lot of videos filmed because we've been doing so much and just trying to film as much stuff as possible, but I try to keep releasing one a week. So we've built up a bit of a bank of videos and I think we've got six lined up. Some good ones grafting. Well, they're all good, but some really practical ones grafting. Oh, I see. We lost the plant here. We, we did a, a round of planting this. See that little plant there? That's a, a bee bomb. And we just lifted off the plastic, but I see this one must have fallen off the cart when we we're moving around so I'll try to find a place to put it just trying to see all the things that geez there's been so much done it's more daily uh, daily as you I said that um, lots of birds are back it's been fantastic and incredible the amount of birds this year we had a tour day Saturday and it was unbelievable that the number of people we had for the tour was incredible it was full and the most exciting part of it almost was that just at the beginning of the morning tour we had uh, an indigo bunting Got a haircut too, see that? From winter to summer. Uh, we had an indigo bunting come around right at the feeder as we're doing this tour. And it was, it was crazy to get an indigo. I had never seen an indigo bunting before. And I've seen a lot of birds, but to see an indigo bunting for the first time and right during the tour. So that, that was a very memorable marker for that tour. I'll remember that for a long time. And if you didn't come to the tour, we'll bring the tour to you. The virtual tour, it's almost done. It's the last, last few things to do, just web related. And uh, we hope to have it to you certainly in the, next, in the very next few weeks. And if you can come, if you're within two hours, I don't want people, really don't want to see people coming Ooh, a warbling vireo oh, they nested here last year but it's also the start of bug season but I was saying about the tour yeah if you can catch the virtual tour but we have a fall tour we only have two tour two tours a year now spring tour which is was last Saturday and the uh, fall tour, which will be the 14th of September during harvest. You can see that on Eventbrite if you're thinking of coming. But if you're only within two hours, we had people come from southern New Hampshire, which is about four or five hours away, five hours away. And uh, that's far. But if you're really going to do this and you're going to do something like this, you want to have, sometimes you just want to be sure that you have, sorry, I'm distracted. I see here's one of our crab apples. They're starting. They're, one, they're the earliest. This is a dolgo crab. With the bumblebees in it. So birds, tour, lots done. It's just so nice to see the blossoms. It's 
really nice to see the blossoms. The plants have popped so much, but the spring has been unbelievably good. <laughs> Most people would say, no, it's been a terrible spring. It's been cool. It's been cloudy. It's been quite moist, although not too much rain, although we had a, a good rain every week. Look at, look at some of these rhubarb here. And uh, so the weather has been fantastic to do planting and transplanting. It's been such a blessing. Did a video on uh, stretching the spring too and how we've been able to put plants away in the fridge. And we just did some more yesterday, some daylilies, the last of them. And it's been great to be able to extend that spring, but the weather's been so cooperative. We've gotten the irrigation system is all up and running for, gee, this is the earliest we've ever done it. It's been a month that we've had the irrigation system up and running. And so that's been just, that's been great to have the water going. Not that we need it everywhere, but we're putting it. This is very sandy, sandy soil, so it's nice to keep the soil moist. So those new plants that are going in are getting off to a great start. Oh, can you see them in there? Let's see. There's a robin taking up residence right up there in the biotope. I don't want to bother it, but it's very, it's, it, as long as you don't get too close, uh, we did modifications to the biotope. Jasmine did put in more nest shelves. Oh, look at this. Black currants in bloom. Currently blooming. It's just, it's just so nice. Like, I, I love to walk around early morning. So we're May 22nd. I just love to take a walk around in the orchard. Look at this. The skunk has been in here. Look at all the digs. That's what skunk digging for grubs looks like. There must have been a lot of grubs in here. And by the way, if you have grubs, the skunk can really tear up your lawn, but it'll also really reduce your grub population so that once this area is done, Chances are it doesn't need to be done again for a bit. Brown Thrasher singing. What else is singing? The Wrens. Wow, look at that. Pear tree. By the way, if you've got your pear or your trees blooming right to the peak, that's right to the very top, that is the maximum height your tree will grow. Because once you put 10 pounds of pears on each of those branches, it, it was like that, it will be like that by the fall. That branch will come right down. So it's nice to see that these trees here, the same with the, the plum trees, it's nice to see that the trees are all loaded right to the top. Like they won't go, and these trees won't grow any higher now unless we really prune them to stimulate them to grow more. But right now that is perfect. That's a great height to pick. Great time to be in the permaculture orchard right now. You can see a little bit the effect of the trios. There's the robin right there. He's the one that's nesting in the biotope. Is it still there? Oh no. I oh yes. That's the male and the female must be sitting on the eggs. So I was saying how so much has been done. Check out this. This is nice to see. Always nice to see the work of previous years. So here was two grape cuttings see there's two of them in there two grape cuttings were put at the base of this honey locust so now they're starting to climb we gave them a 
We gave them something to climb up on and they'll gradually catch the branches. They'll catch these branches and they'll get going. So a few years ago we did that. We put in these uh, grapes and now they're, this was just put in by cuttings and now they're kicking in. They're starting to grow. Oh yeah, we did a big round. We had probably 50 kiwis plants that I got from somebody a few, two years ago and I put them under mist. I almost forgot about them, but they were still there and they did really well. So we transplanted, or Caroline transplanted a bunch of all of those uh, kiwi. So that was great. Look at that, even this is red currant. Red currant blooming under a blooming pear tree. So see the stage? There we have, that's called King Blossom. So King Blossom is when the center, you see it's like a, a, a whole cluster of flowers all around. And the King is always the, the first one. So the King Blossom is, that's what's blooming right now. You see the other ones, there's the King Blossom. So that's, if you only get one flower, that's the one you really want to be pollinated and grow. Problem is we've been, that's why we got rid of the bees. And if you go see that, go see that we don't want bees anymore because honeybees were a problem. They would pollinate the king blossom and then they'd pollinate one, two, three, or four. So you could get five pairs on one spur. And that was just too much. And people have commented, hey, well, why don't you just thin them? I say, have you ever thinned a tree? Like, look at this tree. And look at, look at, look at all the way up. You see all those buds and all those flowers? Do you know how many thousands of blooms there are on this tree? And if you're gonna have to remove all of them on one tree, that's something. So if it's in your yard, go ahead, thin them. You say, well, no, oh, there's another tree right there. There's another pair. Oh, you know what? There's another pair right there. And there's another pair right there. So, yeah, thinning is a nice idea. But I don't, it's uncon inconceivable for me to do thinning on hundreds of, of trees. I don't even know. We got, I think, 1,500 trees. So, no, not going to thin. That's why we don't want more honeybees. So go see that video. So let me let me walk about a little more here because I'm not walking much. There's too much to see here. It's it's incredible. They're so it's so exciting. <laughs> Look at this. All the little gooseberries. So lots and lots and lots of gooseberries. Asian pear in bloom, cherries in bloom, plum in bloom. This is coming to peak. We had, we had, I had advertised the tour this weekend as blossom tour. And you know what? There was one kind of, oh, bluebirds. There was one kind of pear in bloom and some cherries, Nanking cherries. But we, we really are seven to 10 days behind where it should be. And so it wasn't as bloomy as it should be. We've got our first open day for members Saturday. So they are gonna have a treat. They're gonna get to enjoy what people for the tour should have been. We're the 22nd of May. Peak apple bloom should be right two days ago. Should be the 20th of May in our area and you know what? It only will happen around the 28th or 30th. So take a look. This is Frank Tootin's garlic here. He put this in, doing really well. Really nice garlic bed. He has a really nice technique using shredded leaves. So he puts shredded leaves down a whole layer he plants the garlic bulbs and then he shreds leaves. It's a really nice technique. See how clean they are? That's not weeded. 
that's just the way they are. There will be a few little plants poke through the grass, or through the mulch of leaves, but it works really well. Here's our, this was a Caroline and Eva, and how we did a, a big round. We put in another little nursery here. So we got three rows, one, two, three. Uh, that's another 150 apple trees we had. Go see that video. We did a harvesting rootstock last fall, and this is the update to it. So we harvested, we dug them up, and I did a little video on the grafting of these. Really simple technique with the tool, the grafting tool. So uh, that worked really well, and they're laid out here. Jerry, our neighbor farmer, brought us another load of round bales. So we got lots and lots of round bale, old spoiled hay, which is, it's great. Dusty, we did the potato video last, last week, and it was, it's dusty, but that's why you don't want to feed it to animals. So if people have spoiled hay, I'm, I'm always a taker for old hay now because we just need a better setup to unroll it. I love Jerry, uh, Greg Judy's unroller. We don't have that one, but it would be great to have something like that to unroll the bales. Because here we could just unroll a roll of hay two, three times. So put two, three layers and then plant right in it as a pretty good thick mulch. I love using mulch, don't get me wrong. If you saw the stuff about plastic and you say, oh my God, this guy has plastic in his permaculture orchard. Yes, because when we did this, when we started that permaculture orchard block, we could not get enough mulch. We couldn't source it and find it and bring it and, and place it. So we did it with plastic, but I do like using mulch. We just don't always have enough of it. And you do have to come back. Don't think that because this is mulch that it's done for the year. No, we'll have to come back and mulch again. But for these young young trees here, it's it's really nice. So that, that's been done. We're just prepping, I did some mowing yesterday. So we prepped a couple areas we're gonna cover with, we're gonna do in plastic. I like doing vegetables in plastic. They, it grows so well. So some of this is the garden area. So see all this is all area that in the past we have had tons of vegetables in here. We just, we don't have nearly as much now. Here's a Jerusalem artichoke bed. So all this here, all the way up to the end there. That's Jerusalem artichoke. It's just coming up now. We harvested, so that's what it looks like. We harvested a whole bunch of them. It's what some of this tilled area look is from. We did some harvesting in here. We probably got 40 pounds of Jerusalem artichoke out here and you wouldn't know because the plants are coming out as if it never happened. Let me cross to the other block. But, uh, so we've been eating Jerusalem artichoke. It's like anything. Here's asparagus bed. And this is a bed that Frank Tutin put in some years ago. So you see, here's some. That's, that's, uh, I love the smell of asparagus in the morning. Actually, you smell it in the morning if you've eaten a lot of asparagus. If you, you think, oh, you're eating it raw. Yeah, I eat it raw all the time. Raw asparagus is great. You don't have to cook it or steam it. It's good that way too, but just eating it raw right out of the garden. If you have a garden, eat so much of your stuff raw. There's nothing better than being able to just pick it and eat it. It's great. Here's some more of our areas, certainly ready for vegetables. 
Oh, there's some swallow mating action right there. Sorry, showing you some. I don't think I can see that. Oh, there they go. Butterflies are back. The bees have started big time. We got a We've got somebody coming to do a three-day survey of the bees in this orchard to see if there's any difference. Little Korean pine from last last spring's order that I got from Wiffle Tree Nursery. Geez, so much has been going on. Did some pruning. If you saw that video pruning black raspberries. Here's the, we're doing a test on if we pile up the prunings from the raspberries, will the, will the insects use them, drill in there as nest sites? So they should, we'll see that. Here's another pear tree in bloom. I'll show you the cherries, they're really in peak right th this morning. Some more swallow sex going on there. So here's one of the Saskatchewan selection cherries. Look at that. Let me turn that around. An interlude of bees. You see that bees in there? Come on, you want to show yourself? There he is. There's another one. Bees and blooms. This one I think is Juliet cherry. I never really know the cultivars well because we didn't do a great job of identifying a whole lot of our trees. Here he is. In case you didn't know, bumblebees are one of the most important pollinators because they're able to function and start pollinating at 8 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. You'll see it. And honeybees just usually kick in at 12 degrees. Most of the native bees will kick in at a little higher temperature like 12. So the bumblebee is really important. If you get a cool day, like we've had lots of cool days, then they are the only ones that are out there pollinating and doing the job. And so they're, uh, they're really important to have. By the way, all of these bumblebees right now are all queen. They're all queens. They're all mated females from last fall. They emerge and they're all future queens. There's no males around at this time of year. It's just females and they're all queens, so please don't harm them. Uh, they are all gonna look for a place to make a colony. So take good care of them. Here's some of the, er this is the earliest blooms. So here's, this is finished already, you see that? So that's, uh, Nanking cherry. We never did really well with Nanking cherry. Ben Falk has had much better success, but I found we haven't found the kind of the magic spot for Nanking cherry yet. Let's take a look at more at the back. So I'll show you this way. So here's go see that trio video, but here's how it works. We'll have the cherry, and we'll, here's our, this, this is our nitrogen fixer for this trio, and then an apple tree. So that's two fruit trees and a nitrogen fixer combination. So we got apple, then we got a young cherry tree planted here, and a young nitrogen fixer, that's a sea berry right here. So we're trying different sea berries, here's apple, so that would be sea berry, apple, cherry. Here's another Juliet. 
So here's a seedling. That's a, a wild tree just came in on its own. Then we get apple, an old apple. That's a remnant from the orchard the way it was. And then we go back, nitrogen fixer, in this case, apple again, because it's some of the old ones left in there. And so on and so on it goes. Go see that trio video. Go see all the videos, but there's some really, some videos you really need to see. If you're interested in the idea of the permaculture orchard, and even if you just want to grow a couple of fruit trees, go see more of the videos. I'd say go see the film, first of all, the permaculture orchard beyond organic. But I've uh, really been trying to give you information that is the cornerstones. Huh. I don't remember putting this plum tree in here. Hmm. Sometimes I don't even remember planting. Well, more and more I'm not doing the planting. And so this year has really been nice because the crew has been doing all of the, almost all the actual work. I've planted a few thousand plants, about thousands of plants. It, here's a butterfly on the cherry tree. Let's see if I can show you that. Oh, it's gone. And so I find after a while, I don't need to be, I don't need to be doing it anymore. Not that it doesn't need to be done, but you know what? There are other people who want to learn. And so the interns are really here to learn. And I try to get them up to speed as quickly as possible. In the past, this, you're wondering, what is this? This is a, a bird planted wild honeysuckle that we really like having because the birds will eat the honeysuckle instead of eating the cherries. So we, in the past, we've had a lot of interns and sometimes it's just finding out that they don't want to do something like this. So that is just as valuable. But we're here on a walkabout. So just to show you, because it's, it's blooming and I'll show you some of the work we did at the back. See, we even have, here's asparagus. <laughs> That's how tall it could be if we don't harvest it. We've been harvesting our asparagus, but we no longer put asparagus in the trios just because they grow too big. They're really way too big. Anything over about a meter, we don't want to have as a perennial plant. Here's a nice cherry. Look at that. Brown thrasher calling there. Hear that? We had a few people who are really a bird <clears throat> bird aficionados, and they were really impressed at the amount of birds we have. And this is really one of the things. Is this is what? should be this should be normal to have this amount of birds in an agricultural area in an agricultural enterprise it should be normal to have such a diversity and abundance of birds it's not like what i'm doing should be exceptional no it should be the norm so hopefully as you're doing and you're adding so Jasmine did a round of cleaning the nest boxes. And so as you're doing, you should get a whole lot more birds, diversity. Birds are kind of like the tip of the iceberg. It's just the things you actually notice and see. That means if there's so many birds, there's a lot more other things. We're getting more frogs using the orchard. We're even getting more salamanders, certainly more snakes. We want more snakes, we want to create some snake uh, hibernaculums want to create some snake roosting areas you say snakes i hate snakes well we don't have poisonous snakes in this area which is great 
but snakes are really, really useful in the orchard, especially against rodent. Got lots of rodents too. Hear all those tree swallows there? It's about 25 of them right there. So here's another thing just, just finished, uh, was just done at the end of last week. So here we've put in a couple of rows, two rows, and those rows will extend and ha are extending these two rows, which if you see the virtual tour, you'll, you'll understand, but it's basically a big hedgerow that we'll have right in the core. This is the middle of the orchard. So that side and then this side. So it's the middle of the orchard and we want to have great wildlife habitat here, but we also want just to bring the birds into the center of the orchard. So it was a big round, transplanted a whole lot of hazelnuts, some of our some of the better ones that we've noticed and cedars, eastern white cedar. So if you if you see go see that video planting. So we're filling these two rows up. Cedar, uh, hazelnut and as we get them we don't have enough yet uh, sea berry. So we want to do that. Started the first spray on the weekend to do the spray way should have done it maybe even two so we'll see what if we get damaged this is the what's left of the old organic orchard and so it's mostly apple but we're gradually starting to add other other plants in there it's looking good it's looking good i i like sometimes just a little bit it's like it's like uh, if you think you know maybe your house I'm not sure how it looks. Well, just painting makes a big difference. So I find in the orchard, just mowing makes a big difference. So we try not to mow. We don't want to mow everything, but mowing just to give us access in here, especially is nice. So we don't do that in this one. Although here was a strip that was mowed. Go see that, that video on mowing. There's so many videos, I tell you. This was how we mow. Uh, roller crimp mow so we mow in the spring just because it's nice to be able to walk without getting in the tall grass at this time of year where do we go from here oh here's the saskatoon berries in bloom we can see that i also want you to notice look at all the dandelions not I want to do a video on the next this week about dandelions and how if you have a lot of dandelions they're a great indicator they're not a problem they're an indicator our dandelions have really solved the problems they're to, they're gonna solve so watch for that video as well now here's some look how small that plant this is a small bush very compact full of blooms saskatoon berry Amalank here. Just such a lovely time. I, you know, I, I really, I love to walk around in the orchard in the morning. I'm usually up fairly early and I'll take a walk, do some bird watching, just see what's come. At this time of year, it happens so quick. There's, there's new birds arriving on every south wind, but even if it's not a south wind and the full moon they've been coming in because it's a good navigation. So all kinds of birds, but also a chance to just get out and enjoy, you know. Uh, who is it? Solomon said everything that has breath praises the Lord. Well, when you go out in the morning and you hear the dawn chorus, it's called the dawn chorus. It's all of the birds singing you know if you, if you realize a bird doesn't get up and starts to eat right away it goes up it gets up and 
it just sings. And people say it's for territory and so on, and there could be several reasons why they do that. But really, they just want to they just want to be thankful. So if we get up and we start eating right away, well, kind of missed out on the thankful stage. So get out, get up and just be thankful for the day. It really, it really gives you a different perspective. It's hard to be so negative when you're thankful. So kind of just do what the birds are doing. Get up and do something to show that you're thankful. Just take time, take a little bit of time. To give thanks is always nice. Spiders are out too. I hear the kestrels. So there in the biotope, in that first big nest box right there, we got I hear them in the hedge back in the hedgerow, but they're using that nest box. That's pretty exciting. We worked for many years to try to get kestrels and last year they nested for the first time. Two years ago they started and the female got eaten, I think by a raccoon. We found her head lying beneath the nest box. And this year they're nesting, which seems to be with success so far anyway. So something like that, be patient even with birds, not just the plants, but be patient with the birds. So what else can I show you? Gosh, so much seems to have been done. We don't always notice what's been done. It is good to walk through and see. Oh yeah, I think oh yeah, there was a bunch of these liatris perennials multiplied, some bee balm multiplied. So a lot of different things have been done. You don't always notice it. When a plant is little and you propagate it, I think that's why people buy big plants because they want to see the results. Don't get fooled by buying big plants. It's really a false economy because the big plant doesn't do better. The small plant does better because you can pretty well dig it up and move it without breaking or damaging hardly any roots. So we, I really like using very small plants you don't see the results right away. Like here's some hascap that was done a few years ago. But you see here they are. They're still, they're blooming now. Actually they're finishing bloom because they had been blooming for the past week. Here's some small cherry. So that was one planted last spring. So give plants a chance. Start with small plants, give them a chance. We've got to go through today and add some irrigation lines to some plants we put in. And we've had great weather, so irrigation isn't a concern so far too much. But if we get a week without rain or two weeks, it will certainly start to get pretty dry in those areas. I guess I'll... There's another butterfly. So that's about all for today. It's nice to go walk about. If you didn't see the first one, go see the reason why walk about. Today wasn't so much on planning the work. It was just to show you the progress a bit. And uh, it's so nice to see how things are progressing. I should do some more of these. I'll do Certainly as the, as the crop starts to set and we'll see how the, how the trees are setting their fruit and what's coming up. So I should, maybe I'll do it every month if you'd like that. If you do, give me a comment to say, yeah, I'd like to do that, see that once a month, a walkabout. Uh, it's always nice to see how things are progressing. But that's it for our Go Walkabout update. For May in bloom. Hope you enjoyed it. Put down your comments and if you like this and you think somebody might benefit from walking about their property, share it with them. But thanks for watching. Have a great week. God bless you. Bye. Hey!
please subscribe and check out our latest video. Thank <laughs> you.